Welcome to MTV's News Update for today, November 5, 2021. I'm Sandy Ramatar for some top headlines. QC Girl is CSEC top performer with 19 grade ones. President Ali endorses Glasgow Declaration and Global Climate Conference. HIV self-testing set to roll out this month. And its board, Barbie's Cricket Board to launch patrons fund tomorrow. Now for the news and details. Queen's College Serena Aruna Razak was today announced this year's top performer with passes in 21 subjects at the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate Examination, CSEC. Rihanna Griffith reports. 17-year-old Serena Aruna Razak secured 19 grade 1 passes, 2 grade 2 passes, and 1 grade 3 pass at this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate Examination. This news guy spoke with Razak to get an insight into the journey of her becoming this year's top student. This wasn't a surprise. I expected to get the call for this number of subjects. However, I've never really been called for my percentages. With everybody in, it was exciting, but coming to write a big exam, that was definitely nerve-wracking. So it was both exciting and nerve-wracking, I'd say, to collectively describe the entire experience. Guyana's top 10 students are Lashia Chelsea, who acquired 18 grade 1 passes, Zainab Sayara Shafi with 18 grade 1s and 2 grade 2 passes and Roshini Sumaru who secured 17 grade 1s, all students of Queen's College. Meanwhile, Faraz Yassin secured 17 grade 1 and 1 grade 2. Savitri Mahadio secured 16 grade 1s and 1 grade 2. Ronaldo Kamchan and Karuna Lal secured 16 grade 1s and 3 grade 2s, while Roshini Lal secured 16 grade 1s and 4 grade 2s. All students of the Saraswati Vidya Nikitan and Arada Basio from Abram Zuli also secured 70 grade 1 passes and 2 grade 2s, rounding off this year's top 10. Reported for MTV's News Update, Rian Griffith. The Ministry of Housing, Central Housing and Planning Authority has presented 30 beneficiaries with keys to their new homes at the Cummings Lodge Housing Scheme, Greater Georgetown. Here is Luan Williams. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll said the ministry has given 30 keys to low-income earners who would have applied for houses at Cummins Lodge Housing Scheme. He made this disclosure during a press briefing today. According to the minister, these houses have completed construction and 187 houses are to be built in the first phase of this project. Persons have already been approved for occupancy but are awaiting the completion of the houses. All right, so you'll be, you'll be happy to hear that persons have already started to receive keys for the completed houses. And so it's ongoing. Um, but when we speak Commerce Lodge, uh, Commerce Lodge is not only really constructing those houses. Those houses are being constructed in an area called Commerce Lodge 1768. Uh, but we have Commissar 1767 too. Minister Crowell also said land clearing is still ongoing at the location. Farmers who have been occupying the lands that were to be used for the construction of these homes had to be removed but were compensated for the losses that they would have suffered. The land clearing is ongoing and infrastructure at the same time, right? As we go, we, we have the ongoing infrastructure work. So for anybody who's listening and interested on that part of the um, come in South area, um, they can be rest assured, yes. Chief Executive Officer for the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Sherwin Greaves, said at least 80% of the completed homes will be occupied before Christmas. Minister Kroll noted that they have received approval for the construction of flat houses at the corridor of the Oval Airstrip and will commence construction next year. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Housing has so far allocated close to 9,000 house lots to low-income and middle-income earners for the year 2021. The government promised to deliver 50,000 house lots during their first five years in office. Luan Williams, Friend TV's News Update. 
President Dr. Fanali endorsed the Dark Glasgow Declaration this week at a high-level side event at the United Nations Climate Change Conference of the parties COP26. The Guyanese president stated that small island developing states and low-lying coastal countries like Guyana lack support and not ambition in their fight against climate change. During his address to the Climate Vulnerable Fund, he underscored that SIDS and low-lying coastal countries are victims fighting to exist during the climate crisis. The head of state emphasized that these vulnerable countries not only lack an ambition but are constrained by their ability to realize those ambitions. He said that this is even more evident by the adoption of the DACA Glasgow Declaration, which shows SIDS and low-lying coastal countries on ambiguous manifestation of their commitment to realizing those ambitions. The declaration focuses on climate mitigation strategies, adaptation plans, and financing for the world's most vulnerable nations. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. It's time to stock up and save big in a massive pre-Christmas sale on soft X tissues. Buy a bale of 24 rolls for only $1,000. That's right, 24 rolls for just $1,000. This deal is only available direct from our factories at soft X Manufacturing, Lot 12, 28 Eccles Industrial Site. Remember the deal, one bale, 24 rolls, $1,000. So hurry and save big before the holidays. For more information, call 622-4197 or 623-4197. <laughs> Fibertech materials are used in a multitude of ways from repairing and fabrication of auto body, fishing and household items. We have available various fiberglass mattings, resin, mold releases, brushes and rollers for all of your repair needs. We offer technical advice and free training to ensure you get the job done. For further information, call us at 2206907 or 2209192. This is MTV's News Update. Welcome back. The National AIDS Program Secretariat will this month roll out the HIV self-testing, which will create an enabling environment for persons to know their status and prevent spread of the infection. More in this report. The National AIDS Program Secretariat, NAPS, will be rolling out the self-testing initiative during this month for persons who think they are infected with the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. HIV self-testing refers to a process in which a person collects his or her own specimen, oral fluid or blood, and then performs an HIV test and interprets the result. Program Manager of the National AIDS Program Secretariat, Dr. Jagnorain, explained that self-testing will give persons the opportunity to test themselves within the confines and comfort of their own homes. We, th we think that uh, based on the best practice approach from around the world, it is going to be one of the um, techniques used to curb and um, tide, um, and stop the tide sorry, of spreading HIV. Dr. Tarek Jagnarine said key populations in Region 4 will be targeted in the first instance as this region has the highest prevalence of the HIV infections when compared to the other regions. Persons will be able to access the test from the National Care and Treatment Center, Campbellville Health Center, Guyana Responsible Parenthood Association, GRPA and the Midway Clinic. The self-testing has a high level of accuracy as, um, just as the rapid test that we would do when you go towards the clinic, yeah? Luan Williams, from TV's News Update. Through the Central Housing and Planning Authority, the Ministry of Housing and Water has reopened applications for core home support and home improvement subsidies under the Adequate Housing and Urban Accessibility Program. More from Luan Williams. 
The program is valued at U.S. $28 million and is being funded by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, and is intended to improve the lives of low-income Guyanese in urban and peri-urban Georgetown through better access to housing and basic infrastructure. The home improvement subsidies will be a $500,000 grant in the form of construction materials for repairs to their homes that they are occupying, which includes sanitization improvements and other non-cosmetic improvements. And so the intervention that are being made is intended to target the poor and the vulnerable families within communities. And so this is timely because it is also part of the means of reducing the incidence of housing instability and that challenge many of our communities. Some 2,000 home improvement subsidies will be given out under the program, and already 236 subsidies have been approved for 118 residents of Sophia and 118 of Parfit Harmony. Through the Core Home Support Initiative, 250 core homes are expected to be built, and so far, 100 applications have been approved. Applications are available from November 5, 2021 to February 7, 2022 at the Central Housing and Planning Authority's main office and the sub-office in Camp Street next to St. Margaret's School. Persons can also apply online on the CHNPA's website, chpa.gov.gy. We urge low-income allottees and homeowners within the boundary to take full advantage of this one-of-a-kind opportunity to improve their housing conditions and ultimately their quality of life. Persons who are applying must be individuals in vulnerable households, living in structures that are not considered to be inhabitable, and who have ownership of the said property. Luan Williams, Frame TV's News Update. Persons residing in Arakaka Village, Region 1, can now look forward to reliable and improved power supply with the addition of a $15 million generator grid, seeking to boost the village economy and overall standard of living of residents. On Wednesday last, whilst we're heading the government's ongoing flood relief in Arakaka village, Agriculture Minister Zofaka Mustafa commissioned the generator grid site in the government's continued efforts to modernize the country. Regional Chairman Brett Nalashi stated that the grid has had an output capacity of 250 kilovolt amps that will provide stable electricity to the entire village. He explained that the regional officials are currently working to determine the number of hours per day that the generator will be operable. Arakak is located along the left bank of the Bermuda River and is home to over 500 residents. More news coming up on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals the light on your face no mask will hide feel the joy burn deep inside let's have a great christmas this year you me and republic bank my dear whatever you need light up your christmas with republic bank and get a chance to win 825,000 in cash prizes plus get a chance to give a family a christmas hamper in your name log on to republicguyana.com for more details let's light up christmas republic bank we're the one for you. Are you building or renovating your home? Then come to Beeson for a wide range of aluminum and UPVC windows and doors. Get from single hung sash, on it, casement, sliding windows, plus sliding and swinging doors. All our products can be customized and fitted with insect screens and are sealed tight to withstand harsh weather conditions. At Beeson, we also carry commercial, glass and French doors, showcases, aluminum louvers, curtain walls, aluminum rails, plus sliding and frameless shower doors. So look no further. Visit our showroom today at lot 1228 Echoes Industrial Site or call 622-4197 or 623-4197. Peace on windows and doors. Filled with pride in Guyana by Guyanese. You're tuned to MTV's News Update. 
Ghan has stopped in 20 of the 33 subjects of the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations being offered by the Caribbean Examinations Council. More in this report. Guyana has once again outperformed the rest of the Caribbean region at the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. Improved performance was evident in four subjects and remained constant in six subjects. Outstanding performance were noted in eight subjects, where 90% and over gained acceptable grades 1 to 3. Some subjects with outstanding performance were Agricultural Science double award with 93.14%, Information Technology with 92.59%, Physical Education and Sports with 99.28%, and Theatre Arts with 100%. Grade 1 to 3 passes in English A declined from 77.6% in 2020 to 67.72% in 2021. However, the 2021 pass rate in English A was constant when compared to 2019 with a pass rate of 68%, while mathematics moved from a pass rate of 43% in 2019 and 48.36% in 2020 to 31.6% in 2021. In English, in English A declined from 7 to 7.76% in 2020 to 6 to 7. 0.72% in 2021, so we saw a decline there. Mathematics moved from a pass rate of 43% in 2019 and 48.36% in 2020 to 31%, 31.6% in 2021. An analysis of the 2021 preliminary results revealed that the overall pass rate at the general and technical proficiencies for grade 1 to 3 was 66.36%. Reported for MTV News Update, Brian Griffiths. We tell you now that the Health Ministry has ramped up efforts aimed at reducing the incidence of malaria transmission following an increase in cases over the last five years. Here is more. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said, out of the 61,663 malaria tests conducted for this year, 14,860 came back positive. Malaria is a serious and sometimes fatal disease caused by a parasite that commonly infects a certain type of mosquito which feeds on human. Minister Anthony said that the disease continues to pose challenges to the country and as such his ministry has ramped up efforts to fight against the disease. Dr. Anthony had said most cases of malaria are from hinterland region, which makes up 94% of the cases in Guyana. Although treatment is among the ministry priority, it is focusing on prevention. So we have a collaboration right now with the Harvard School of Public Health, and they are helping us to do a number of studies as it relates to transmission of malaria modeling the disease, uh, using newer techniques in, in how to model the disease, and by understanding that, to work on how to reduce transmission. The ministry has already distributed insecticide-treated bed nets to residents in Region 1, 7, 8, and 9. Minister Anthony is urging persons to get an early diagnostic of the vector-borne disease. Reported for MTV News Update, Rihanna Griffith. 56-year-old Aubrey Campbell, a father of 14 who hails from Sebai Village, was among hundreds of farmers in the Matagai sub-district who benefited from the government's flood relief cash grant on Wednesday. Campbell, who was involved in subsistence farming of cash crops, said he suffered great loss during the heavy rainfall back in June this year. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Crowell, who led the distribution exercise, along with the Chairman of the Neighborhood Democratic Council, Orlando III, and a team of officers from the Ministry of Agriculture, distributed a total of $17.3 million to 173 farmers in Canal Bank and Sibai. Minister Crowell said the initiative is part of the PPC's government support package for farmers and households that were severely affected by the floods. The minister explained that the grant is not compensation, but rather support to help persons get back to some degree of normalcy. He therefore urged them to use the funds for the purpose intended. Minister Crow said all initiatives form part of the government's mandate to secure the livelihood of its people regardless of their location or background. Minister of Agriculture Zulfa Kamustafa and Minister of Local Government and Regional Development Nigel Damla also led distribution exercise in his Machos Ridge and Port Kaituma, respectively. Now for tonight's edition of Star Technology Ram.
Welcome to the Star Service Center located on our second floor. If you have any laptops, computers, printers, or any other electronic that needs fixing, we can get it done. As an authorized service center for many brands including HP, Lenovo, APC, and many many more. In the event of any needed repairs, you can have peace of mind knowing that we will use genuine replacement parts all while having a quick turnaround time. All of our wonderful technicians are constantly trained to be capable of repairing all of your needs all while providing excellent customer service. If you have any questions, call or stop by Star Computer to talk to one of our experienced sales technicians and they will help you with any issues or questions you may have. We look forward to seeing you here at Star Computer. We now take a look at tips for healthy livering, brought to you with the kind compliments of Natura's high and low milk powder, distributed by Dabby's Variety. What does Natura high and low milk powder have? It is fortified with the extra goodness of vitamins A, C, D, E, and K. It is high in calcium, protein, and enriched with folic acid, all of which help to strengthen your immune system. What it doesn't have is fat and cholesterol. Natura, high and low, healthy, can taste good. Available at all leading supermarkets and groceries nationwide. Natura high and low milk powder is not for infants one year and under. Kidney stones are hard deposits made of minerals and salts that form inside your kidneys. Kidney stones have many causes and can affect any part of your urinary tract, from your kidneys to your bladder. Often, stones form when the urine becomes concentrated, allowing minerals to crystallize and stick together. Symptoms A kidney stone may not cause symptoms until it moves around within your kidney or passes into your ureter, the tube connecting the kidney and bladder. At that point, you may experience these signs and symptoms. Severe pain in the side and back below the ribs, pain that radiates to the lower abdomen and groin, pain that comes in waves and fluctuates in intensity, pain on urination, pink, red or brown urine, cloudy or foul smelling urine, nausea and vomiting, persistent need to urinate, urinating more often than usual, fever and chills if an infection is present, urinating small amounts. Pain caused by a kidney stone may change, for instance, shifting to a different location or increasing in intensity as the stone moves through your urinary tract. Causes Kidney stone often have no definite single cause, although several factors may increase your risk. Kidney stones form when your urine contains more crystal-forming substances such as calcium, oxalate, and uric acid than the fluid in your urine can dilute. At the same time, your urine may lack substances that prevent crystals from sticking together creating an ideal environment for kidney stones to form. Types of kidney stones include 1. Calcium stones Most kidney stones are calcium stones, usually in the form of calcium oxalate. Oxalate is a naturally occurring substance found in food and is also made daily by your liver. Some fruits and vegetables, as well as nuts and chocolate, have high oxalate content. 2. Struvite stones Struvite stones form in response to an infection such as urinary tract infection. These stones can grow quickly and become quite large, sometimes with few symptoms or little warning. 3. Uric acid stones Uric acid stones can form in people who don't drink enough fluids or who lose too much fluid, those who eat a high-protein diet, and those who have gout. Certain genetic factors also may increase your risk of uric acid stones. 4. Cysteine stones These stones form in people with a hereditary disorder that causes the kidneys to excrete too much of certain amino acids. Risk factors Factors that increase your risk of developing kidney stones include family or personal history. If someone in your family has kidney stones, you're more likely to develop stones too. And if you've already had one or more kidney stones, you're at increased risk of developing another. Dehydration. Not drinking enough water each day can increase your risk of kidney stones. People who live in warm climates and those who sweat a lot may be at higher risk than others. Certain diets. Eating a diet that's high in protein, sodium, and sugar may increase your risk of some types of kidney stones. Too much salt in your diet increases the amount of calcium your kidneys must filter and significantly increases your risk of kidney stones. Being obese, digestive diseases and surgery, other medical conditions. Treatment 
Treatment for kidney stones varies depending on the type of stone and the cause. You may be able to pass a small stone by. Drinking water. Drinking as much as two to three quarts a day may help flush out your urinary system. Unless your doctor tells you otherwise, drink enough fluid, mostly water, to produce clear or nearly clear urine. Pain relievers. Passing a small stone can cause some discomfort. To relieve mild pain, your doctor may recommend pain relievers. Medical therapy. Your doctor may give you a medication to help pass your kidney stone. This type of medication, known as an alpha blocker, relaxes the muscles in your ureter, helping you pass the kidney stone more quickly and with less pain. Kidney stones that can't be treated with conservative measures either because they're too large to pass on their own or because they cause bleeding, kidney damage, or ongoing urinary tract infections may require more extensive treatment which involves various types of surgery. Lifestyle changes. You may reduce your risk of kidney stones if you 1. Drink water throughout the day. If you live in a hot, dry climate or you exercise frequently, you may need to drink even more water to produce enough urine. If your urine is light and clear, you're likely drinking enough water. 2. Eat fewer oxalate-rich foods. These include beets, okra, sweet potatoes, nut, tea, chocolate, etc. 3. Choose a diet low in salt and animal protein. Reduce the amount of salt you eat and choose non-animal protein sources such as legumes. 4. Continue eating calcium-rich foods but use caution with calcium supplements as these have been linked to increased risk of kidney stones. Diets low in calcium can increase kidney stone formation in some people. What does Natura High and Low Milk Powder have? It is fortified with the extra goodness of vitamins A, C, D, E, and K. It is high in calcium, protein, and enriched with folic acid, all of which help to strengthen your immune system. What it doesn't have is fat and cholesterol. Natura, high and low, healthy, can taste good. Available at all leading supermarkets and groceries nationwide. Natura High and Low Milk Powder is not for infants one year and under. ISG and MTV's Sport Update is next. Stay tuned. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high-quality building supplies. We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size, and designs. And all types of ceramics, porcelain glazed and full-body porcelain. We stock the largest collection of large format tiles. Check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by 4.5 feet. Add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding. Our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. Our wall and ceiling gypsum system. It's light, durable and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cherry Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut for that 31 years of Lens quality. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. At Decor and Gift Gallery, we have comfortable and unique living room suites. Check out your bonded leather sofa or three-piece recliner set and much more. Or pick a lovely dining room set to match your home setting. Whatever is your style, we've got it. Shop your living room or dining room sets at Decor and Gift Gallery today. Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. 
Cayenne is the sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF Bearings, Seal and Belts, International Trucks and Parts, and Napa Batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable, integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. The Burbies Cricket Board will launch the second edition of the BCB Patron Fund tomorrow at the New Amsterdam Secondary School. The patron has committed $2 million for the fund this year. This is according to Hilbert Foster, president of the Burbies Cricket Board BCB. Each of the 11 first division clubs in Barbies will receive $100,000 worth of um, cricket balls. Um, that's white cricket balls for first division, which has rose from $2,200 before COVID to $3,000 now. We will also be investing um, to train 160 young cricketers across Barbies with, um, with social skills where we'll be teaching them public speaking, um, table manners, personal manners, hygiene, and so. The clubs that will receive the balls are West Burbies, Blairman, Police, Tuckbur Park, Rose Hall Kanji, Young Warriors, Albion, Rose Hall Town Youth and Sports Club, Port Moran, Skeldon, and Upper Quarantine. The seminars are the brainchild of Honorary Patron Minister Barrett and will be held in the sub-associations West Burbies, New Amsterdam Kanji, Lower Quarantine and Upper Quarantine. Each of the seminars would involve 40 under-19 players and would be conducted by graduate students of the University of Guyana Social Works class. And the final one is that Minister will be investing about half a million dollars worth of, of his funds into providing educational grants for 20 outstanding. In fact, it's 400,000, where 20 young cricketers across Barbies will receive $20,000 each from Minister as part of our CES to Education program. The BCB plans to host a number of tournaments once approval is granted by the National COVID-19 Task Force and have already given notice to clubs to start getting their teams together. In other news, the West Indies women will open their ICC Women's Cricket World Cup qualifying campaign on November 21st against Papua New Guinea at the Sunrise Cricket Club in Harare, Zimbabwe, in the first of their Group A fixtures. The International Cricket Council revealed the fixtures for the two-week qualifying tournament in Zimbabwe. The schedule will see the West Indies women playing three other Group A opponents, Sri Lanka, Ireland and Netherlands, in the first phase of the qualifier on November 23rd, 27th and 29th respectively. West Indies will initially focus on winning their Group A matches to be one of the top three teams to reach the Super 6 phase of the tournament from December 1st to 5th. The Super 6 pits the top three teams from Group A against the top three teams from Group B consisting of Pakistan, Bangladesh, Thailand, Zimbabwe, and the USA. Group points will carry over into the Super 6 phase with the six teams vying to finish in the top three to qualify for the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup in New Zealand from March 4 to April 3rd. The top three qualifiers, as well as the fourth and fifth place teams in the Super 6 phase, will also secure places at the next ICC Women's Championship. We tell you now, West Indies have been fined 20% of their match fees for maintaining a slow overrate during their 20-run defeat to Sri Lanka at the T20 World Cup in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Defending champions, West Indies were eliminated from the semi-finals after losing their third game in Group 1 against Sri Lanka. Guyanese Shimran Hedmeyer made a brilliant showing for the team, despite their defeat yesterday. He posted 81 runs not out for the team. I knew that at the time the spinners were the only one that really posted a danger for, for any one of the batsmen at the crease. So with pace on the ball, it would have been much easier. So at, at the time, I was just thinking that the best thing to do is just to see off, well, to try, try as much as possible to get at least 24, 20, 24 runs off of the, any one of the spinners. And then when the seamers come on, just try, try to capitalize as much as possible, at least try to get at least 
10 plus off of each over that they that they bowl. So it'll basically make a back for the overs off the spinners. But um losing wickets didn't really help the case. Hedmeyer highlighted some areas the West Indies should work on to improve in future matches. The West Indies will face Australia in their final group match tomorrow in Abu Dhabi. Uh for us gaps and weaknesses um I think it's for, mo- for most teams that play T20s, try, try to try to limit the dark ball percentage. I think that's something that we've been working on from the Caribbean with those 15 T20 games that we had. And even now, we're still working on just basically parting as, as less dark balls as we possibly can because everyone knows West Indies team is a boundary-hitting team. So if we, could, if, if we could basically mix boundary-hitting with getting singles and, dub- and doubles and stuff, in between that, it's something that will really benefit us. And finally, Formula One title rivals Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen said they will race fair and clean for the remainder of the season, amid fears the title battle could be decided by a collision at the final race. This is according to Reuters. Hamilton trails Verstappen by 12 points heading into this weekend's Mexican Grand Prix. This is with just five rounds remaining, including Sundays in Mexico City. The 36-year-old Mercedes driver is chasing a record eight championship. Hamilton said he would never resort to underhand tactics, which have been used before by some drivers in title fights, most notably in the controversial situations involving Ayrton Senna and Elim Prost in 1989 and 1990, and with Michael Schumacher in 1994 and 1997. Red Bull's Verstappen said he did not believe what had happened in the past had relevance today. The two have already collided twice this season. Verstappen has won eight times this season to Hamilton's five, but Hamilton's victory in Mexico City in 2019 handed Mercedes their 100 F1 win. Hamilton is the most successful driver in the history of the sport with 100 career wins and 101 pole positions. For MTV Sports Today, Jessica Callender. That brings us to the end of Sport Update, which was brought to you with the kind compliments of ISG. More after the break. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5 millimeter to 600 millimeter in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And that brings down the curtain on tonight's newscast. But before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. QC Girl is CSEC top performer with 19 grade ones. President Italy endorses Glasgow Declaration of Global Climate Conference. HIV self-testing set to roll out this month. And in sport, Barbies Cricket Board to launch Patrons Fund tomorrow. Catch our rebroadcast tomorrow at 6 hours 30. Don't forget to like our Facebook page where the news can be viewed live at 19 hours 30. On behalf of our news and technical teams, Sandy Ramukar Singh, stay safe and goodbye for now.